<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, David and Kevin for inviting me for to present and share with you my uh, uh, discovery and how we are moving from uh, accidental discovery in the lab to uh, advice that can save millions of people's teeth around the world. So this is myself. Uh, I work at University of Alberta in orthodontics, and also I hold uh, I uh, I'm a private practitioner in. Uh, um, outside, I have a private office, and also I have a PhD in bioengineering. In 2006, there was a, a huge uh, media release. Uh, uh, the inventor researchers patent new technology that can regrow teeth, and <coughs> hopefully, in a few years, we can reach that uh, claim. But a device that can help you grow your own teeth, uh, broke a tooth, grow it back. So this is true. Uh, I'll share with you what we have and where we are and the future. Okay, so this is the accidental discovery in dental research. Basically, um, if you are familiar with distraction osteogenesis or uh, surgical bone lengthening. So if someone has a short bone like this uh, girl, for, for example, this, uh, this leg is short. So what they do to lengthen this short leg, they cut it, put a screw in it, and then they open the screw every day, and then in few months, the short leg can be as long as uh, the normal leg, okay? In craniofacial area, we are dealing with lots of problems, especially with the lower jaw. When the lower jaw is underdeveloped like this, we can do the same thing, the same technique. We break the jaw, put a fixator with a screw in place, and then after a few weeks, then the patient move from here to here. And basically, the whole idea is to regenerate or grow the patient's own new bone without the need for any hip or any bone graft or any other materials. The only problem with this uh, technique in the craniofacial area, usually we hope to get the bone from here to here, but most of the time the bone doesn't grow in the direction that we have. And most of the time it grows in different directions and the output or the resultant bone shape is not what we are actually planned for. So we try to look in, into something that can promote the bone healing at this distraction site or at the bone fraction site. So we looked at different uh, uh, non-invasive techniques and ultrasound was the best one uh, that or best solution that's been used in uh, clinical trials and in the lab for almost 30 years to promote fracture healing or bone uh, to help healing of fractured bone. So we have three types of ultrasound, just to introduce you briefly what ultrasound, because lots of people get confused about uh, the sonar that's been used and, and the shock waves. So there are three types of ultrasound, depends on the power. Uh, the shock waves that can use uh, uh, diagnostic, sorry, that's this diagnostic that uh, lots of uh, pregnant women can use to check their babies. And oper that operative that can crush kidney or renal stones, and it has lots of power and the therapeutic one that's mainly used in physical therapy. And this is the one that we are going to talk about its application in dentistry today. So the first research that I did uh, was at University of Illinois, and that, that was my PhD, was to evaluate an, a commercially available ultrasound device that's been used to help healing of fractured bone on bone maturation during mandibular or lower jaw distraction osteogenesis or lower jaw surgical lengthening. As you can see in this rabbit here, we cut the lower jaw, we start to lengthen or open the screw, and then we hope only new bone to be filled in this space here. And this is where the cut was. And when I did the cut, I cut the lower incisor as well. And we were really excited to see what's gonna happen to that lower incisor. And then, after a few days, you can see the side that treated by ultrasound, the tooth was growing more than the other side. And that was a big discovery, and I, I got lots of criticism from my supervisor. Uh, what did you do to this poor rabbit? Uh, nobody will believe you. You will uh, present this in an uh, improper research book, and lots of uh, funny stuff. And then, until four weeks after this discovery, we did the histology, and then this is the new bone that you can see here. And in the middle of the gap, we had a new tissue that it's not bone. And on a higher microscopic level, you can see, or if you're an expert in the dental field, this is new tooth that's been formed at this destruction site. That was the first time in history that we can show people that new dental tissue can be formed in few days. 
Again, rabbit's teeth are different slightly from human teeth, okay? So there was lots of criticism how to apply this into a clinical trial or in human. So basically, the results of this, resu uh, of this research that ultrasound can generate new dental tissue formation, and this new dental tissue formation is dentin. And dentin, basically, it makes the bulk of the tooth, and cementum, which is the outer layer that attaches the roots of the teeth to the bone. Okay? So these two main parts can be regenerated by ultrasound in rabbits, not the enamel yet, because the enamel is a different story. So in orthodontics, when we move teeth, there are lots of risk factors that a big chunk of people can get into a big problem that's unresolved at this moment, which is root resorption or root shortening. So when you have braces for three, two, three or four years, if you are one of those high-risk patients, what can happen? The roots can be gone like this. So there is no roots. So the tooth can start like this, and then after three, four years, the root is being blunted and shortened, get shortened. This is a real case that's been sent to me on a daily basis, one of the cases. And also another patient from UK, all over the world, they have this problem, and there is no treatment for those patients so far. So, um, so we started a clinical trial, pilot clinical trial on patients that they have braces. And in some patients that they are going to have braces, some of them we have to take some teeth so we can have spaces so we can straight up their crooked teeth. On those patients, the teeth that to be extracted are always good candidates for us to do some research on them because the patients are going to lose them anyways, right? So yeah. <laughs> But we had also a hard, hard time recruiting patients because most of them, they are excited to get into the braces. Do we want to finish the braces? So and so anyways. So we're successful in getting some patients. And we start to apply some uh, forces to induce root erosion or root resorption. And on the other side, in each patient, we apply the commercially available ultrasound device. You can see the applicator here is, is, bi is big, as big uh, like a Tony. And it wasn't actually comfortable for the patients to apply it. but. Uh, I was lucky to get really good patients or compliant patients to use this commercially available device. After four weeks, uh, the, the teeth that didn't uh, receive ultrasound, you can see the erosion. This is the cementum layer here, and also the dentin get eroded, and this uh, root as well, you can see the erosion everywhere. But interestingly, after four weeks, when we applied the ultrasound here, new dental tissue was formed, new dentin and new cementum. That was, again, the first time in history that we can show that new dental tissue can be formed in four weeks. And that was published in the American Journal of Orthodontics. So we start to move more higher to higher forces because when we did this uh, pilot study, we were aware, like we were actually, we had to be very careful not to apply too much force so the patient don't get uh, severe pain and stuff. Now, we're confident enough to apply huge amount of force and see what in the real life, what's going to happen. So this is what happened. This is at the University of Alberta. A patient came for the same experiment and then we apply huge amount of force, like almost uh, 13 times the original force that we applied. Just try to imitate the real time or the real life uh, orthodontic force application. And then when we apply ultrasound to this site only, you can see the root was preserved here but the inside root was severely resorbed, and the control uh, root or the tooth that's been moved without any ultrasound, the two roots get shorter compared to the preserved root here. So that means the ultrasound really works. So we have lots of patients that been send us emails, fo uh, photographs of their x-rays, photos on daily basis. They try to save the roots. So you can see millions of patients worldwide, they have these problems. <coughs> 